The corporate interests influencing the corporate Democrats in the House, who essentially said that they would stand in the way of the $3.5 trillion reconciliation bill, the budget bill that would include everything that Democrats allegedly want, are now taking a victory lap. Because it turns out that the 10 corporate Democrats in the House who were a problem from the beginning, were in fact being influenced by their donors. They were in fact being influenced by the richest people in this country to essentially force a vote on the bipartisan infrastructure deal by September 27th. That's something that Nancy Pelosi has agreed to. Now remember, when it comes to Biden's agenda, there are two separate bills. The first bill is the bipartisan infrastructure bill, which has some decent provisions in it, but of course has a number of corporate handouts and giveaways. It also includes what's known as asset recycling, which would privatize public infrastructure. So corporations and Republicans seem to love the bipartisan infrastructure bill. Corporate Democrats love the bipartisan infrastructure bill. What corporate donors do not like is the $3.5 trillion budget reconciliation bill, which includes all the provisions that have been stripped out of the bipartisan infrastructure bill. Now, progressives have said we need to pass both bills simultaneously. Nancy Pelosi argued that they would pass both bills simultaneously. But after the corporate Democrats in the House proved to be an issue and said that they would stand in the way of passing the $3.5 trillion bill, Nancy Pelosi caved to them and agreed that she would hold a vote on the bipartisan bill on September 27th. And so they held a procedural vote just yesterday. I just wanna give you guys the context before I get to a memo that the no labels group has been sending around to brag and essentially engage in their victory lap. Yesterday we found out that the house voted 220 to 212 to pass the rule to one, begin writing begin writing Biden's $3.5 trillion safety net package. That's the reconciliation bill that I'm speaking of. And then two, guarantee a vote on the infrastructure bill, which allocates $550 billion in new spending by September 27th. And then three, vote on the John Lewis voting rights bill, which is a stripped down version of the For the People Act, which was of course a more robust voting rights bill that Mansion and Cinema said that they were against in the Senate. Now, let's focus on what happened. Like, what is influencing these corporate Democrats? They claim that they just want shovels in the ground, everyone. They want to make sure that we get these infrastructure projects started immediately because the American people stand to benefit from them. Now, of course, they don't talk about what their corporate donors are saying behind the scenes and how they're urging these Democrats to be supportive of the infrastructure bill and force a vote on it as soon as possible. But let me give you the details on what Pelosi initially wanted and what ended up happening. According to The Intercept, Pelosi offered the conservative Democrats a vote on the infrastructure bill by October 1st. That was the initial plan. And Representative Peter DeFazio, chair of the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, suggested that the House could finish work on its final reconciliation package by then. Now, seeking to win back the leverage, the conservative faction had recently lost the Representative Gottheimer group, these are the corporate Democrats, then shifted its demand to sometime earlier in September, thus the September 27th date. So when conservative Democrats got exactly what they wanted yesterday, turns out that the US Chamber of Commerce was very, very happy about it. And they were actually pretty transparent, tweeting, Thanks to the tireless work of the 10 House Democrats, we now have a date certain for a vote on the infrastructure bill. And it has been successfully decoupled, decoupled from the reconciliation bill. Because remember, they don't like the reconciliation bill. The reconciliation bill helps average Americans with childcare funding, with universal pre K, with mandatory family leave, all of these provisions that would greatly benefit the lives of ordinary Americans. Chamber of Commerce not interested in that. But they are interested in the corporate giveaways that will be included in the infrastructure bill. Now, the reason why it's important to pass both bills simultaneously is because obviously corporate Democrats, corrupt Democrats have 
no reason, there's no leverage, right, to, to ensure that they vote in favor of the reconciliation bill, unless you say that you do both bills simultaneously. Again, the $3.5 trillion reconciliation bill hasn't even been written yet. But what corporate Democrats want, what corporate donors want is a vote on that bipartisan bill. So all the leverage that progressives have is just washed away. Now to be fair, progressives are still standing their ground on this, right? So really, this is an issue where the can has been kicked down the road and there hasn't really been any real, let's just say any real positive development in either way. Like there will be a vote on September 27th, but as David Dayen mentioned, there needed to be a vote on the infrastructure bill around that period of time anyway. And I'll give you those details in just a second. But first, let's go to Liz Morrison, who's the co-executive director of the No Labels Group. This is a group of corporate donors who certainly did not want the reconciliation bill to pass, but they certainly do like the bipartisan bill. She writes in a memo, a vote on the bipartisan infrastructure bill is not what Pelosi wanted as both she and the Progressive Caucus had previously insisted that the Senate vote to approve the full reconciliation bill before the speaker would bring up the infrastructure bill to the floor. The unbreakable nine, She's of course referring to the corporate Democrats here, have now broken this link as Pelosi can no longer use the infrastructure bill as leverage to force Democratic moderates to vote for a reconciliation bill. So guys, that was the plan all along, that was the plan. So understand what the real motivations of these corporate Democrats really are. They wanna do away with any leverage that progressives may have. It looks like they might be a little delusional because they think that they have enough Republican votes to get the bipartisan bill passed without really relying on progressives. Progressives are saying, we're not gonna vote for the bipartisan bill unless we see a path forward for the reconciliation bill. Corporate Democrats say, we might not even need you guys. Let me give you more from the memo. The nine, nine corporate Democrats had to give up something too. They agreed to vote yes on the budget resolution that authorizes debate to begin on reconciliation. This is essentially the same thing all 50 Senate Democrats did a few weeks ago. It is just a vote to begin debate and in the end, any of the nine can still vote against a final reconciliation bill. So do you see what's happening here? The corporate Democrats say, we're gonna stand in the way of the reconciliation bill unless you give us a vote immediately, as soon as possible on the bipartisan infrastructure bill. But in the background, you have the corporate donors saying, once we get that infrastructure bill passed, they know that they don't have to vote in favor of the reconciliation bill. So they're still planning on voting no, they're still planning on voting against it. And even Nancy Pelosi admits it in a statement that I'll read to you in a little bit. Now for their part, progressives, I do wanna give them some credit because progressives are still standing their ground. Representatives Ilhan Omar, the whip for the Congressional Progressive Caucus told The Intercept that the caucus's insistence on coupling the two measures had not changed. Representatives Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Rashida Tlaib agreed. In fact, Cori Bush also weighed in and said, quote, it has to be both, both bills need to pass simultaneously, they have to be together. And also the bills will only move together according to Representative Mark Pocan of Wisconsin, saying that the caucus quote, has a strong chunk of members who will see to it. In fact, they did an internal poll and they found that 100 Democratic members of Congress agree with the progressives. They will not vote in favor of the bipartisan infrastructure bill unless there is a path forward, a clear path forward for the reconciliation bill. Now, the American Prospect also reports the following, and I think this is an important bit of nuance to the story. Even if House, even if the House votes for the bipartisan infrastructure bill, Pelosi doesn't even have to send it to the President's desk right away. The timing of when that bill goes forward is at her discretion, meaning that it's within her power to hold off on sending the infrastructure bill along until the reconciliation package is complete. Experts in congressional procedure have verified this and Pelosi herself actually did a version of it earlier this year when she held off 
for a few days on sending impeachment articles to the Senate. So there are two ways that progressives could use leverage, okay? Number one, the progressives can say that they will not vote in favor of the bipartisan bill unless there is a committed path forward for the reconciliation bill. And they claim there are 100 members who are willing to flex that muscle. And then the other potential save could be Nancy Pelosi. And I know this is the area where I probably feel the most shaky. But Nancy Pelosi can hold on to the bipartisan infrastructure bill until she has both pieces of legislation ready to go for President Joe Biden to sign. Now, I wanna get to Representative Cuellar because he's the conservative Democrat who should have been defeated the last time he was challenged by a wonderful progressive. But here's what he had to say. He said, quote, we've got at least 10, 12 Republicans, he said, and the progressives will fall in line. They're going to support the president, I feel very confident. But as David Dayen tweets, That's not necessarily a big deal. In fact, it's kind of laughable when you consider the number of progressives versus the number of Republicans who allegedly would vote along with Democrats in the bipartisan bill. On the GOP side, 10 to 12 is not at all impressive. More GOP senators voted for the bill and there are four times as many House Republicans and also is likely an overcount for one reason, named Donald Trump. Remember, Donald Trump, does not want even the bipartisan infrastructure bill to pass because he doesn't want any wins for Joe Biden. He's planning to run for president again and he doesn't want any members of the GOP to work with Joe Biden or hand him any type of victory, even if it's a victory for corporate donors. David Dane also says, but let's let's humor Cuellar and say they have 12 Republicans. That means 15 Democrats could sink the bipartisan infrastructure bill if reconciliation doesn't pass first. There are many more willing to do so and not just progressives. So that's a pretty good sign. And I just wanna remind you all of what is on the line here, okay? Why is it that we care so much more about getting the reconciliation bill passed? I already implied that it would actually materially benefit the lives of ordinary Americans, but how so? Well, the $3.5 trillion bill is the legislative vehicle that Democrats are using to pass President Joe Biden's most ambitious goals, which include a Medicare expansion, which would include hearing, vision, and dental, paid family leave, universal pre-K, and you know, pre-K, and an extension of the child tax credit to 2025. That was the child tax credit, of course, that was included in the coronavirus relief bill. And billions of dollars for clean energy and other climate initiatives. So all the important stuff that we need, that we want, is in that reconciliation bill, which is why it's so important to pressure Democrats in the House who claim they're gonna stand their ground to continue standing their ground to ensure that we get what we need in the passage of this reconciliation bill. And look, I'm always skeptical of Nancy Pelosi, but it seems like Pelosi is well aware of what's really going on. And I have two more tweets to read to you that gives you a sense of what's happening in her mind as these debates play out. Pelosi calls the accommodation made to moderates yesterday, setting a September 27th deadline for the infrastructure vote, a clarification considering surface transportation programs needed to be reauthorized by September 30th. Remember, she committed to a September 27th vote and she says, quote, and so we're talking about a couple of days earlier. But here's the relevant statement from Nancy Pelosi, because she knows what's really going on. That doesn't make her a good guy or bad guy, it's just very clear that she knows that these corporate Democrats are not actually interested in starting infrastructure projects that would benefit the ordinary American. No, Pelosi also acknowledges that the dispute wasn't just about getting a vote on the infrastructure bill. In fact, she says, quote, there are those who would like to see the reconciliation be smaller. And some of that from the outside had an impact on some of the debate. No, no, no. They didn't have an impact on some of the debate. Those corporate donors had an impact on all of the debate. And that's the problem. 
that corporate interests have run amok, that they actually govern this country and have been governing the country. And luckily we have some progressive members in the House who are not funded in the corrupt way that the vast majority of US politicians are funded. And that's why we're relying on them to withhold their vote as a bloc to stand their ground and refuse to support the bipartisan infrastructure bill unless we get the reconciliation bill passed and ready to go. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more, there's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.